As millions of children across this country head back to school, most of them are coming back to a classroom that looks pretty normal compared to the last couple of years. There are few mask mandates and few pandemic restrictions left. To check in on what the fall will look like and could look like on vaccination updates, we're joined by Canada's top doctor, Chief Public Health Officer, Dr. Teresa Tam. Good morning to you. Good morning. It's nice to be here. I can't believe we're already, what, at August 30th. Here we go. School, school is back in yes. gear. Dr. Tam, with children heading back indoors, back into the classroom, what concerns do you have? Well, I think everyone wants our kids to stay healthy and well when they go back to school and daycare. And as you said, you know, we want as little disruption as possible to make things as normal as uh, before, but the pandemic is still with us. So I think um, as we head into the fall, we can't, we don't have a crystal ball, but usually respiratory viruses, influenza, and COVID is likely to increase as we head back into the school when everybody's congregating inside. Uh, and, you know, as parents, we're being told, you know, the kids don't have to wear a mask in the classroom. But what is your advice to parents this morning? Well, we advocate a vaccine plus approach. So if the first layer of protection we are recommending is, of course, get your kids vaccinated, especially if they haven't had their primary series, the first two doses. So any kids uh, six months and older now has the benefits of being to get the protection from vaccines. But especially when viruses uh, um, activity is high and we have monitoring systems to tell people that and your local public health will probably advise people when the virus activity is high, then adding layers of protection makes sense. And I think in the classroom, we have to respect for the, the fact that there's a diverse student population. Some kids might have underlying medical conditions. They may want to wear a mask just to add a layer of protection, and others may want to wear a mask just to protect each other as well. And stay home if you're sick, wash your hands. Those are the really key habits that we learned uh, during the last two plus years. I want to ask you more about vaccination. So right now, fewer than half of children between the ages of 5 and 11 have had two doses of a COVID-19 vaccine, which is well below the uptake seen in the older age groups. But we broaden the scope and we talk about vaccinations. What vaccination should our children have before heading to school? Well, there's a set of recommended childhood vaccinations covering a range of childhood illnesses that used to be really severe for kids and we've really dampened down the level of them as a result of the vaccination, such as measles. That's a very contagious virus. And we've had a uh, herd of measles um, outbreaks now re-emerging uh, um, in different parts of the world. We even have cases of um, polio viruses in different parts of the world. So. These are the benefits of childhood vaccination. So make sure you're up to date with, with all your vaccinations before you head back to school. Uh, meni meningitis, we've had uh, several cases now reported of meningococcal meningitis in older uh, uh, youth and individuals. But nonetheless, um, this is really important as kids head back to school. And uh, influenza vaccine becomes available a little bit later on. So the end of October or November, but uh, COVID vaccine is available now, so you can get that protection before you head back to school. And you're right, only 50% of um, kids 5 to 11 have had their uh, initial two doses, um, just a little under that, I think. And so uh, now's the opportunity. And, and as I say, keeping kids as healthy as possible so they can stay in class as with as little interruption as possible. And what do you make of that percentage, the fact that we're seeing, you know, less than 50 percent? Well, I think uh, the key is to understand why and providing parents with the necessary information to answer the questions that they have is really key. So some parents think, oh, kids get milder illness, so why should we let get them vaccinated? And that is true. For, for the most part, kids get milder illness from COVID but some do end up in the hospital and a few end up in the ICU. Others get um, lingering medical uh, symptoms for a long time, what we call post-COVID conditions. And vaccines can offer a protection against these serious outcomes and the benefits outweigh the risks. So that's, that's one equation. Secondly, is that some parents think, well, we, our kids have had COVID this year. Uh, well, our National Advisory Committee on Immunization advises you can still get vaccinated even if you had an infection. 
you can wait six months depending on the disease activity in your area but having a vaccine on top of your uh, of your existing infection can offer a, a boost and an increase in your protection as well. We asked some parents uh, for their questions for you, and I'm going to read one from Gigi, who asked, if pretty much every adult in Ontario is vaccinated and kids are the least vulnerable, why do they have to get vaccinated, especially as they get so many vaccines at the same time already? That's something, you know, Dr. Tan, that I have heard with all of the vaccinations. People are pretty worried about so many vaccinations in such a short period of time. Well, kids do get a range of vaccinations throughout the initial years of life and up to 46 years of age, uh, but they are generally well spaced out. Um, but COVID vaccines can be provided at the same time as needed, depending on your age. Uh, we do um, initially, when COVID vaccines are introduced, ask for them to be provided potentially at a different time to your existing vaccines, just to uh, monitor for any uh, side effects from the vaccine. But in general, you can give a number of vaccines at the same time. And children are exposed to all sorts of bugs and, and things throughout their lives, and quite a lot of them at the same time as well. And we've proven uh, when billions of vaccinations have been provided to children uh, all over the world, that um, the benefit far outweighs the risk. So that's that's really important to understand. And I think now that we've had so many vaccines given out to kids, uh, um, the COVID vaccines, we've been able to say that any serious side effect is very rare. So I think just bear that in mind. And it is true that, of course, we can protect each other by getting vaccinated, but um, the vaccine is not perfect. No vaccines are. So uh, vaccination cannot provide a, a, a uh, a lot of protection against infection after a while. So individuals have to protect themselves against any serious outcomes. And some of kids, as I said, have high risk underlying medical conditions. So protecting them and protecting each other is really key. I've heard a lot of people in my, my group of friends and my family say they're going to wait for that vaccine that targets both the original strain of COVID and the Omicron variant. Any updates into, as to when that is coming to Canada? Well, I think it's going to be uh, pretty imminent. And so that's the bivalent vaccine that contains the original strain, half, the, half of its original strain and half is the Omicron strain, which is designed to broaden the protection um, against different uh, COVID variants, as well as give you a boost to your underlying immunity once you've had the primary series. So I do think that's, uh, you know, we should expect Health Canada to finish their review very soon and we do have enough supplies and initially these vaccinations are targeted uh, for adults but i think our national advisory committee on immunization is also looking at the possibility of providing these boosters to uh, adolescents or older kids so that 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 expert review is uh, under, being undertaken at this time. And for the younger kids, the key, as I said, is to get your initial two doses right now. In terms of hospitalization and cases in this country, Dr. Tam, uh, how are we doing? Well, at the moment, we, well, in the summer, we expected virus activity to be lower, but we still got quite a significant number of cases of um, Omicron BA5 related illness. And hospitalizations uh, did rise over the summer, uh, but has stabilized, but it's not coming down fast. Um, so, um, you know, we're still watching that. We hope that it will come down further uh, before an increased activity in the fall. Uh, so, but usually, of other, for, the, for the most part, these are our seniors or people with underlying medical conditions. So um, we need to protect them, protect your grandparents. You know, as you head in, back into school, you mix around and then you go and uh, visit your grandparents on the weekend. You have to be mindful of that as well. Dr. Teresa Tan, we really appreciate your time this morning. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.